EECMS is introducing the first virtual employment equity compliance solution by taking your consultant online. Clients are no longer required to conduct face-to-face -face meetings with our consultants. Our virtual solution will allow clients from around the globe to interact, consult and train with their respective consultants from the comfort of their own desk. With our web-based compliance services, your employment equity solution submissions and consultations will stay compliant as per the requirements of the Act, no matter where you are based. No more travelling or boardroom bookings, we bring the service to your desktop. Conduct conference calls with remotely based colleagues and superiors during the consult. Share live documents or screens to all attendees and consultants for brainstorming or clarification sessions. Audio visually record meeting discussions between yourselves and the consultant for references and notes. Join the web-based consultancy services today and comply with your employment equity services from the comfort of your own desk. Speak to your consultant for more information or contact our information centre for details on the services rendered. EECMS, your virtual employment equity compliance management service. EECMS utilizes an online tool to ensure full and total EE compliance as per the amended Act. We ensure that you are in full compliance with the Employment Equity Act. We do it all. You just need to connect with us as we aim to become your go-to guy. We meet and consult via our virtual solutions. We implement the Act and you achieve compliance. Employers with over 50 employees Agriculture over 6 million turnover, mining over 22.5 million turnover, manufacturing over 30 million turnover, electricity, gas and water over 30 million turnover, construction over 15 million turnover, retail and motor over 45 million turnover and more. Eliminate penalties. Increase a triple BEE score, forming a sense of belonging to employees. Effective transformation and promoting diversity. We submit the EEA2 and EEA4 reports on behalf of our clients, after approval thereof by the CEO or accounting officer. EECMS has a level 4 broad-based black economic empowerment rating. Our clients therefore qualify for 100% recognition when procuring from us. Our CEO has been involved in various marketing and communication entities. We have various EE specialists, including a compliance auditor with three years experience at one of the big four auditing firms. Our team has been involved in 62 DG reviews from 2017 to September 2019 with a 100% pass rate of companies not being referred to the Labour Court. Submissions of reports are done by a number of experienced data capturers and we have a staff complement to ensure the successful submissions of all our clients. We currently serve more than 160 companies who employ anything between 6 to 12,500 employees. Our client base includes private companies, listed companies, close corporations, non-profit organizations, educational institutions and government. Clients' annual turnover ranges from very little to more than 1 billion rand and we have a client base throughout South Africa. EECMS, your virtual employment equity compliance management service. Good morning, everyone. First of all, thanks a lot for everyone attending the COVID-19 training today on this cold Thursday morning, the 28th of May, 2020. As mentioned before, my name is Peter. I work for a company called EECMS, a company dealing in employment equity, ensuring that all our clients and companies in South Africa are in compliance with the employment equity legislation. Uh, to ensure that companies do not receive penalties from the Department of Employment and Labor. Again, on this chilly morning, a very, very warm welcome to everyone attending here today. Uh, with regards to the COVID-19, we are currently on level four. We hope and we believe that this will change to level three on the 1st of June, 2020. Uh, however, as far as I do understand, it has not been gazetted as yet. And we have Mr. Charles Kinnear, 
that is a senior labor specialist based in Cape Town from our virtual offices to Charles's virtual office. Charles, thank you very much again for your time. Thank you so much, Peter, and welcome again. Uh, yes, indeed, it is a cold uh, Thursday morning here in Cape Town too. We're experience, uh, experiencing the cold very much, so uh, yeah, I can feel it there. Um, but welcome also to some of the older faces that I've seen here, some of the new ones, and also some of the uh, familiar names that contact me during the week. Um, now, I think everybody is here sitting and waiting. Maybe I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in level three, and I'm, unfortunately, that's not going to be the good news. I'm not going to debate on that or talk about it. I will touch base on it, what was said by the president. And I will tell you also my reasons why I reserve this. I'm just going to share some of the things, the topics we're going to discuss today. First of all, it will be about the manual, the compliance manual uh, workshop. That's today we're going to touch on that, that we're going to talk about that manual. It's a generic document and I will help you to complete it and take it from there. That is the first one and that is the main subject on this stage. Uh, these, the other two, I just want to say it is, one is an, as a training and the other one is uh, uh, a guide which I will release later today or maybe only on Monday if we don't get the Gazette today um, so that we can maybe just tailor cut some of the things. However, I doubt in the uh, uh, back to work manual there will be not a lot of changes because um, I think it was to set up a couple of rules and some things is just going to be ease a bit in terms of the amount of people coming to the workplace. Uh, the other one is a training facility and that is about the employer as well as the employer, ach, employee, sorry for that. Uh, it's about the employer, what you need to do and shall do and must do and everything and refer to legislation and all that kind of things. Um, and also to make you aware that you need to uh, uh, do a proper induction training with your employees. And the employee must understand it so much that it is conversant for him or her. Now, what is the meaning of conversant? Now, the act says, it must be conversant. Okay. Now that is to say that the, that the employee can talk freely about it with enough knowledge. Not hearsay knowledge, not rumors, but what was said in the legislation. And that is two trainings. So I'm first going to talk to the employer. And I think, Peter, you must correct me. Is that next week or so? I don't have my diary in front of me. Um, but that's a training on itself and in the training for the employees. And it's very much that it needs to be certified. So when you do it, get a, a, a visit from the Department of Labor to say, but here I had a training, it is presented by this company, everything, and there's the attendance register as well as certificates of attendance. Right, <laughs> and now that is about the trainings. And um, just to give you some background on these developments that we made, uh, can I say since real five, which was the late March or middle March, um, we, we tend to see what is the need in the workplace. And that was the important thing is to, to, to show everybody what is the need in the workplace and what you need to bring in as rules. Because remember, when we're working with employees and we need to govern the employment place in such a way that everybody understands, I must wear a mask, I must do so, uh, social distancing, that, that thing. But they need to understand it and you need to prove that there was a rule in the workplace. Go back to the Labor Relations Act, go back to your judgments of the Labor Court. It always goes about, where's the rule? That's the first question. If you can prove the rule and they understand that the rule is fair and that is in, in Section 8 of the Labor Relations Act, subsection 7, and you will go and see that A, B, and C, and D, and E. Uh, you will see that they, they required to see whether the rule was, was it fair, was it knowledgeable, and can be executed. All right. So that's a short and sweet about it. Now, with COVID, new rules came into the workplace. 
And I can tell you one thing, if I look into the pandemic, we will look at the stats now, now. It's not going to end tomorrow. It's not going to end the end of July. Uh, I hope so, yes. That is my biggest prayer every night to God, is to say, help us please out of this pandemic. This is a war. It is not a war against a human. It's a war against a virus. And that virus is airborne. So yes, that's a critical side of it. Let's go to Katleo. Uh, welcome to us. Welcome. I'll just let her in now quickly. Let me share then the presentation for today. <clears throat> All right, my details are on there. And I think you will find it also on YouTube um, about where you can contact me, email me. You're more than welcome to do so. Um, I try my utmost best to um, to answer all of them as soon as possible. Uh, though I do have also my, my own clients that I need to still facilitate now and then. Um, so yes, uh, I do have that responsibility on. All right, um, we're going to talk about the COVID-19 compliance manual. That is now the work, uh, the, the basically back to work manual that you need to go and write. Now, the, 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 the manual that's available from Peter and them um, is a generic thing. So you must go and read and see where you must fill in to accommodate your workplace. So understand it from the start here. Yeah. It is not specifically to a sector or to a business or to an environment because you are the only one who understands and know your environment, your workplace, your uh, uh, sector. Because there's sectorals, there's the basic of employment, and all these things need to be considered also. But the HRs in this room will understand what I'm talking about. All right, just the introduction, return back to work started back. That is only to start up. Now, uh, please bear in mind, it was written in level four, However, nothing will change so much. Nothing will change so much. If you feel that there needs to be something changed, you can always email yours and say, review and tell me, must I adopt anything? Must I take out, put in more, et cetera? It's in your good hands to ask me to assist you with that. Um, this is a guide that along with the certain performance, generic documents, that's the appointment of the of the uh, uh, guide or, or the officer, the health and safety officer, specifically for COVID-19. That is important to understand it. And there's a lot of other documents also. And I will take you to one of the other screens also now, which we do have a, uh, it's not going to be a weapon or anything like that. That will be a manual that you're going to ask for me. And if you need the templates on there that are referred to, I can email it to, also to you. Very helpful, very comprehensive, I think so. So yes, sit in tight, this is gonna be a nice road. Okay, and then to assist in, in implementation of the uh, applicable regulations. Now, we, we are dealing with that in the document, we refer to leg legislation, and where you need then to come in and make your own uh, thing. You must remember that you must make that part and parcel of your health and safety committee also. The Health and Safety Committee must also get involved here. So don't think it's now a separate committee. No, no, no. You will, the only thing that you're going to have separate here is the officer or the manager you're going to uh, uh, appoint as the compliance COVID-19 officer or manager. All right. And that person needs to have an, an appointment letter. And within that appointment letter gives him the guides, what to look and what to do and what to make compliant and see that everybody is compliant. Now, just go back a little bit back to level five. Level five required, first of all, only a COVID-19 policy for the workplace. We wrote it and it was also generic and we distributed it because it was like a three pager. But then we came to level four in April and there was also a court case, uh, but it was more in the mining industry. But I think it was given birth through that court case that government say, no, 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 no. Now you must have also a manual in your place. You must understand how you're going to govern your rules and regulations in terms of the extra ones that came in from COVID-19. And then in level 
before we develop the back to work manual or starter pack, a generic plan, it addresses us all needs according to the to the legislation. You 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 know your you know your workplace, and that is for you to to make the coloring into that uh, manual, and we can re uh, review it and comment on it as you wish. All right. Okay. Then we came into May. And departments say, no, 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 besides that manual, you need to show that you trained your employees so the employees can be conservant uh, of what you train to them. They can be vocabulary, have a vocabulary and a knowledge to talk about COVID-19 freely and with great knowledge. And that is where we then developed and got this training package together and say, we're going to train the employer, we're going to play uh, uh, train the employee and, and also certify them with a, a attendance register, attendance uh, certificate also. In then May comes the announcement on Sunday, the 24th of May, 2020, and, and His Excellence uh, President of South Africa, Mr. Silva Ramaphosa announced, the country is going to level three, no five. Okay, I'm going to comment on the president just now. Let's talk about the statistics in South Africa. You will see tested, positive cases, recoveries, deaths, and new cases. It's growing. By the day, it is not only a South Africa thing, it is a global thing, this virus. Okay, tested data, uh, a total of 634.996 tests have been conducted. And that was now recently. This is the latest stats of yesterday from the government. You will see also, yeah, the, the, there's two sectors that they are doing. It's a private sector. That means if you go with your own medical aid to be tested, and in public when you use public facility or the public health system. A reported COVID-19 deaths, and you will see here also uh, it is being categorised into. Uh, provinces, uh, provinces um, Eastern Cape, Free State, Gauteng, you will see it goes down in the Western Cape. Mm, okay, we always look like we're in the spotlight somewhere. However, all right. But anyway, then there's the recoveries on the, on the right hand side. And yes, I, I would like to express my condolences to all the loved ones that passed away from their families, their friends, and also from their employers. The emergency hotline. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember this, dot it now again. People are asking me this, and it is so easy. There is the hotline. That is when you do have an employee saying, I've got a headache. Maybe I've got a COVID-19. What now? The corona is in me. Well, don't give him a beer. Just say, relax and uh, call the hotline. They will prompt certain questions, ask certain questions, and then determine and whether that person do have maybe some signs of that and Im immediately tell him, well, well, inform him or her to go into quarantine. So somebody can send, and that will be coming from the government side, somebody will send, be sent from the Department of Health to do a test. And obviously then the test results will only come out after seven days. So we're already 12 days in quarantine. Um, and that is when you must start now tally up with UIF and say, okay, okay, when must I put this person under ill health benefit? The moment you hear the results. All right, that is the call line. The WhatsApp support line is also there. It's very nice. You just send that number, there's a hi or something like that, and they will reply and give you certain um, departments which you can click on and you can go and ask whatever you need to, uh, to know. Uh, the guys with the Twitter accounts, try it also. There's a Twitter account for, for COVID-19 from the government. And there's Instagram, WhatsApp, like I said. And there's also YouTube. And you can go and listen to the minister because he will, I will only echo what he said. You can go and listen to that. And I might give you, uh, I must just look for that um, one clip which you can go and listen about the training and about the comp uh, compliance on the employer 
and also then the, the, the chief inspector of the Department of Employment and, and Labor said, we, if we of the uh, appoint, uh, opinion that your, your workplace is not on the standard that you required it for COVID-19, we will close you down, give you time to get your house in order, then come back and inspect it again, and then you can operate. Don't waste your money on things like that. Be productive. Okay, um, that is the legislation, the manual informed by the Occupational Health and Safety, and earlier on I was referring to your Health and Safety Committee, which must get involved here. It was also read, uh, well, read with Disaster Management 57 of 2002, and then the newest, which was published by the NCCC, uh, disaster Management Regulations. In conclusion, a policy and workplace plan is compulsory. Compulsory. Remember this. It's the same like with this mask. It is compulsory. COVID-19, return back to work. Then the company policy, COVID-19 and return to work, inclusive of a risk and hazard assessment guide. A, comp a comp uh, compulsory legislation and in the objectives. What is the objectives? The policy should, should be read in conjunction with your current occupational health and safety policy. Pre provide and maintain as far as is reasonable, practical uh, working environment that is safe and without risk to the health of the employee. Applications, employees and visitors to the workplace they need to apply this. Visitors, though that can be your clients, that can be your niece or your cousin or your aunt or your uncle or granny coming to visit you, they are also subject to this. Policy will remain in force for so long as declaration of the national disaster published in the Government Gazette 43096, 15 May, March, sorry, 2020 remains in force. And I doubt if we're going to move out quickly. And then the content, back to the basics. What the world, it's not WU. Yeah, it is WU, but it's a World Health Organization's guidelines on reducing infections and what to do when symptomatic uh, um, systems is there or science is there. And there's three categories also uh, in my training, which I will provide next week or so. Uh, just speak to Peter about the date. Um, it will be defined and also visited and show you what is those three steps or levels, like the government is now talking about levels. Uh, um, workplace so control. I'm so sorry, Charles. Thanks a lot for that. Yeah. Yes. Um, to all the delegates attending today, uh, there will be another session, Charles, uh, next week, Monday, 10 o'clock, we mentioned, as well as Thursday, the 4th of June, 10 o'clock as well. So just to inform all the delegates, uh, I will also mail everyone the link for the meetings next week. No additional cost. You can attend. We can facilitate up to a 1,000 delegates. Uh, you are more than welcome to invite four other people in your company to attend as well. Uh, that I will give through... I believe by tomorrow and or early next week. Sorry to barge in, uh, uh, Charles. Thank you. No, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Thank you very much for that helpful information. Um, yes, in, indeed. Um, hopefully, we can then talk about level three in that also. So um, I might have a very rough uh, weekend coming um, to, to adopt the whole new rules in level three if it's gazetted. All right. But anyway, we'll get to that just now. All right, you will see a risk and hazard assessment, workplace controls, the safe working uh, work practice guidelines, and then the PPE. Well, now, what is PPE? It's your protective gear that you need to put on. What must be put on? Shame, I went to, into a, a tiny shop, and this one lady was sitting there. I think she's one of the guides or assistants in the shop, and she was dressed in this plastic thing all over. It's like a jiffy around her with the mask, with the shield. And I thought, well, girl, you are well protected. I love this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, then specific matters, travel, meetings, transgressions. Now, 
travel is coming in in level three as a discussion on this stage i know that very much and who's going to travel that's the big question and i don't want to talk about it but i think it's going to be very strict and um i just now saw old mr buffett he was commenting how to kill the air airlines also this morning in the newspaper so yeah so th there's a lot of things that we're going to discuss next week a moment we receive this gazette from government because I cannot elaborate on the Gazette unless I don't have uh, a signed one by the minister. It's going to be um, false information because they can turn around in one minute and say, back into level five. Yeah. All right. So remember one thing. We are moving into level three. But to go back to level five, it's only announcement by the president of South Africa. And we're back in there. All right. So, and, and, and that's in essence where the, where the training must come is to, to make everybody alert. We can go back to level five. Do you want to go back into level five? That's the biggest question. And that's the answer that only you can answer. And I'm talking about the employment within the workplace. Right, um, risk and hazard uh, assessments. There's it all dotted. Remember, this is on the website. You don't have to write now down everything. It, it is actually opportunity just to go through this and later on ask your question and answers in the Q&A. And then we, you can go onto YouTube and retrieve it. This document is already on um, Peter the, the Choice uh, uh, website, so uh, YouTube uh, publication. So you can go and get it anywhere. I just there's some add-ons here which are obviously the it was given both at this previous um, training or, or um, weaponing workplace plan structure employee face in plan remember in level four, uh, level four there was a 30 percent come back to work now level four, uh, three is going to be everybody back to work basically. that's how I see it um, but like I said, let's let's let the government guide us on that. According to COVID-19, directions on health and safety in the workplace issued by the minister and regulations. Again, it's all the regulations mentioned how to apply this in the workplace plan. Then a, a, a proper and effective uh, application on the Occupational Health and Safety Act. Um, and yes. One, there is a differentiation with this workplace plan, and I saw people asking me these questions. And, you know, like for instance, let me, let me take an example. The one lady phoned me and said, Charles, I know she sent me an email. We're only four people working from the home base, office basically, but our staff out there working on other uh, clients' uh, premises are more than a hundred how do we handle are we a small business are we going into category uh, for workplace plan more than 10 plus or what must we do and you know it, can you see what i'm trying to say here is that not every workplace is the same as the other it differs from situation to situation now I don't know if they're working for checkers or shoprite or a pick and pay. Um, it, it sounds like it, but you will get uh, distributors which which will have uh, uh, packers out in the shop. Now, first of all, your employees going there. Who's the responsibility for to that employee's health and safety? It's you. All right. Secondly, okay, you less than ten people in the workplace. Now, the workplace is confined here as where you solidly work. Right, I don't apply to this whole workplace plan then. I must just have the policy in place and certain rules and regulations. Yes, indeed, but you still need to protect your, out, your, your employees going out to a hundred other places. Well, it's simple. You go to that uh, client of yours and say, may I see your workplace plan? May I see what is the rules around that? And could I get an, or do you supply an induction? training to the to the staff or may i use that to in to first give an induction to my staff before i let them onto your floor it will only be fair now where you're working much bigger 
uh, uh, 11 plus or 10 plus, um, obviously together, then you need this workplace plan in place. Work the training and, in, and make sure that your employees do have the knowledge about the workplace plan. The plan can be basic. Let me just admit you now, participant. Can be basic and rel uh, reflect the size of the business. Now that is for 10 and lesser employees. Use a COVID-19 ready play, uh, workplace plan. We provide an amendment to, according to your company's needs, your workplace needs, and let's talk about the workplace needs because that is where all the workers are, the employees are, and that is where we need to have these rules and regulations in place. Okay, then medium and large, that is now with 10 employees and more. You will have a more detailed plan that should be developed. Use the COVID-19 ready plan. We provide it and meant according to your business. And you will see how I'm emphasizing there, you must create it to your needs of your, of your, your working world, can I say that. Face return to work plan. Step to take to re uh, ready workplace, the risk assessment, the HNS, health and safety, and the travel disclosure, clean this uh, disinfected play, uh, workplace. And remember one thing if you're coming back to the workplace after this whole 48 days or plus, how many you closed down nearly two months now. Um, there will be dust in the workplace. Rather get somebody, a professional sanitizer company that can come and sanitize your, your workplace. It will be to your benefit and also the benefit of your employees. Um, I recommend it because that is what I just ca can echo coming from the uh, Minister of uh, Employment and Labor. A list of 60 plus work from home um, and and yeah you need to define also the work the workplace work from home are you working from a home as a as a group or separately there must be also rules and regulations in terms of this and who's going to stay at home and for what reason remember people with severe illnesses and chronic illnesses that is like diabetics um, AIDS um, um, bronchitis you do get people that's regularly on bronchitis people older than 60 rather keep them still away under level three and onwards up until you hear from the minister of health it's now safe to bring bring them back agreements of social distancing that's a policy that's a rule how to wear it and people please when you when you go how to apply sorry when you talk about social distancing, train them what is the estimated amount. Now, the common one is 1.5 meter. So make it 1.5 meter and let people talk about it and know also and do a workshop and say, how can we tell our customers also to apply this whole social distancing? Sanitizing, it must be available, it's provided by the employer. Screening systems, you get a screening systems very cheap now on this stage. I think it's going for 999, the last one that's been sent to me. If you require a distributor in Johannesburg or so, I can send you their brochure. I do get these brochures. Don't know where they got me from, but uh, okay. <laughs> but it's, I, I normally just exchange it with the clients and, and, and um, so forth. Um, rotation based, visitors. And then the minutes of the meetings and the employer's uh, responsibilities. Now, minutes of the meeting is the health and safety minutes me meeting that must be implementing on these regulations. That needs to be minuted, drafted the agenda, then take the, the, the minutes of the meeting, sign it off, and it's in place and it's packed. All right? Employer's responsibility, use the, uh, uh, use the provided documentation titled. The detailed employer responsibilities to implement 
all the applicable employer responsibility in the workplace. Now it's all in there. You don't need to go and reinvent the wheel. It's there. It's you needs to tailor cut it. Make use of the minutes of the meeting. There's a template for that as provided to ensure effective compliance with the responsibilities as indicated. Now it goes very jointly also with your uh, BE scoring to say that we do have this health and safety uh, process in place. Everything we are doing it according to, to uh, COVID-19. And let me tell you one thing, nowhere yet is their training accredited only for COVID-19. But I will talk about accreditation and that kind of things later on in, uh, next week for the two sessions. Consult, discuss with your employee, employees the recommendations listed in the guide that you find applicable in your workplace, in your workplace. And it must be a two-way conversation here. Let them talk. First you say, let's see an agenda we're going to talk about, and then that's the issues on the table, and let's discuss it jointly, and get jointly to an agreement to say, that's how we're going to run this regulation. We're not dictating anymore. We jointly make decisions. We jointly will help and go through this whole thing. We need to, unfortunately, not take hands, but in spirit, let's take our hearts together. At the start of discussion, ensure that all employees sign the attendance register when entering the, uh, the, the, the meeting. End the meeting by declaring that the discussion of the policies and, and, and measures are now implemented and immediately effective. Coming back to the rules and regulations in the workplace. COVID-19 ready checklist to ensure proper compliance with the workplace plan, policies and regulations. Compliance officer, appointment, you must get an appointment letter, the warrant letter, the draft is there. The checklist, employer responsibility, will assist you to ensure compliance with employer responsibility, responsibilities in the workplace. Detailed inspection checklist to assess the uh, potential risk of exposure to COVID-19, control measures, and provide recommendation to management. Template, the PPE register, employee, visitor, history register report. Employee health disclosure document and others. Now, very interesting that I read last night, this, the, um, I think it was the star, yeah, the star, 27 May. The National Co Coronavirus Committee Co uh, Command Council on Wednesday announced again postponement its media briefing that was supposed to shed light on the implementations of the new regulations level. This was the second time the briefing aimed to clarify questions around how level 3 lockdown will all work had been postponed at short notice and that was yesterday. Another meeting scheduled for Wednesday night which was aimed to outline socio-economic relief has also been delayed. The NCCC media briefing on the Regulations related to the COVID-19 level three restrictions scheduled for today, and that was uh, yesterday, 27 May 2020, 12.30, and the briefing of the social uh, cluster scheduled at 18 have been postponed, a statement set. Now, that's why I'm saying, very interesting to keep your eye on it. That's why I'm saying we can anytime move to level five. And it's all about our human behavior. Now, okay, yes, only possibilities. And luckily, News24 gave that to me so I can just talk about it. They initiated it, not me. <laughs> all right, what, what's allowed? Domestic air travel for business purposes will be allowed. Maybe. So which it's not in the Gazette yet. Sale of liquor will be permitted under cert uh, certain times. I don't know. All construction will now be allowed, still not confirmed, stamped, and published. All clothing sales, all households 
appliances. Oh yes, it must open because my uh, one tunnel drive just gave in. So yeah, Murphy's law in this <laughs> in this year, COVID nineteen. No more restrictions on outdoor exercise. People were, will be allowed to exercise any time during the day. All right. And then wholesale and retail, including spas or shops, will be allowed to complete, completely reopen. Okay, that is only suggestions and it's not cast in stone. Anything can change. Anything can change, really. And if you listen to what the president said on Sunday, he did not specify anything. He moved the country into level three. And there's certain statements coming from the Department of Health by the, the Minister of Health, which control gatherings. We saw the churches now open. Um, it's not going to happen the 1st of June, I can tell you that. Uh, um, I had a church that was asking me to help them with some guidelines, etc. cetera. Um, yes, there's place of prayer, like your mosque and that kind of uh, churches also that would love to open. Um, but unfortunately, social distancing is going to be the number one. Secondly, obviously, also very important is your mask, uh, protective gear, whatever. And then sanitization is the most important. And your pillar is water and soap. Okay. Uh, Francois, you're welcome. I'm just allowing, <coughs> sorry, I'm just allowing Francois in, uh, into the room. Okay, mask wearing will remain compulsory. Ah, there's very fashionable mask coming out now. I love it to see. Uh, SPCA, I bought about 10 from them, which I want to distribute to my, some of my clients and so forth. Uh, high risk ec um, economy activities such as restaurants, pubs and lodges and hotels. There's, yeah, there's still gray area about accommodation but anyway i'll get that to monday on uh, next week the sale of tobaccos is still a ban gyms are still banned um, and anything that's in a clone confined space like a club or something like that you're not allowed you can go and play golf after this first of june yes okay then conference events and gatherings there might be a little bit of ease provided that social distancing is allowed and that there's good ventilation um, and maybe uh, that's only a maybe and then hotel and uh, hotels and accommodations for leisure is also out uh, the hotels it's open now it's only for COVID-19 um, people going into um, quarantine okay then a little bit about Africa I had a, an interesting session sometime last week uh, early last week with some of the delegates in, in Africa so far north, uh, talking about Kenya, Uganda, um, Angola was there, Mozambique was there, oh, endless, uh, Malawi, uh, um, Malawi uh, Botswana was even there, which is a very good country. Um, however, they were all interesting to know what's, what's happening. Um, but yeah, um, interesting about uh, the Africans uh, um, COVID-19 and the movement of that, it came in very slowly into the into the um, can I say into the into Africa basically, and for what reasons I don't know. The COVID nineteen pandemic has reached a milestone in Africa with more than a hundred thousand confirmed cases. And who? That was said by them, Mr. Who. It noted that the virus has now spread to to every country in the continent since the first case was confirmed in the region of 14 weeks ago. Despite crossing this threshold, the pandemics which uh, has struck with such a devastating force in much of the world appears to be taking a different hallway in Africa. That's what they say. Case numbers have not grown at the same uh, expectation rate as uh, in other regions and so far Africa has not experienced the high mortality seen in most parts of the world, like Italy. All right. It is noted that there are 3,100 confirmed deaths on the continent so far. All right. Now, there was also an interesting thing about it. And with this came another one also this morning, which I read was about the uh, bottom of 
UIF or UIF as such. Now they announced this last, well, two weeks, two days, so sorry, two days ago. Workers will now get their UIF money paid directly into their bank account. Now from the start, I said that was supposed to be done. Because I can see there's, 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 there's going to be a lot of boxing events after COVID-19. Uh, blame game between employer and employee. But anyway, okay. Now UIF say no, they want to actually pay over to the employee. My question to them was, now why only now? Why didn't you start it? Well, obviously COVID came as a surprise and I need to, to get people up and running and to know how to work processes of payments, the amount of money and see that it's gone to the employee. And that's why they made rather a decision to say, no, we give the money to the employer. The employer will pay that money over to the employee, which is not taxable, and must provide a proof of payment back to UIF to qualify for the next claim, uh, which might be now in May. Now, May, is, May payment is still outstanding because they blame some fiber hiccup. Anyway, that comes from the Department of Employment and labor. The labor department said workers will now be paid directly by the unemployment insurance fund. And I think that's because they got their staff in place, they've got their people all trained and know who to pay and how they work this whole thing out, which I think it will avoid a lot of disputes, um, scenarios of blame game. That is my comment on that. All right, that is so far from me. I will come back to my information so just now i'm just going to the other uh informations i want to give you before we go into um the q and a or the questions and answer right the first one i'm going to show you is something that i'm going to publish after the gazette this one is drafted so long it's an introduction to coida 19 from where you start how the process will work, and I can just take you through the whole thing also quickly, um, but it's not going to be available on the website. Remember this uh, before, only after the Gazette. That's it. All right, introduction stats versus UIF relief measures. Measures. All right, there's a lot. And then I'll give you all the information on that. And then where to start, how to take the whole thing, the whole diagram is in there. What do you need? What kind of papers you do, do you need? where to fill in and where to go all right so sit in touch it will come to you then the preparation of required documents letter of authority we do have the examples if you need it you send me an email i'll send it to you memorandum of, of agreement moa it will make uh, also statement it will it will be mentioned in your manual anyway you will see moa member a memorandum of agreement right an example is provided in there also. And if you want further ex example, please email me. I will give you. All right. Then the instance where your payroll provider does not provide you with an update of versions, uh, we can give you all that export and layouts and everything that you need to have ready. But you can read this thing the moment I'm going to pay, publish this. So and then you can read it in 100%. All right, uh, this is only for payroll purposes, then sub, uh, submit your application, the communication, where to, how. Now, I had an interesting uh, case the other day. A lady contacted me through Peter and said, please help us, we can't get our things right. We cannot, when we enter our UIF reference number, you say you're already there. And we did not file anything, what now? And we tried everything we can, can you help us? And I said, yes. We will help you, don't worry, sit tight. After that, I came back and I gave her all the information she needs. Next morning, I just got an email. Thank you, Charles, super, it's done, we're on. Okay, it lets me feel so good, I'll be honest with you. Um, yeah, it's like when I give my doggy a nice bone, that's how I felt. Uh, you gave me a chocolate, yeah, just to say thank you. All right, so yes, it's always, oh, it's, it's always me, so, so nice to, and fulfillment from myself to see where we can help businesses to do it properly, correctly, and you know, not to suffer. 
because at the end of the day, if, if the business is suffering, the employees is going to suffer. The, the employer and the employee is going to fight with one another. Not good. All right, benefits payouts, the threshold, the normal benefits, reduce working hours. I discussed that. Reduce wor uh, uh, work notes. Um, everything will be there. Then the ill benefits, and I attached that on that on earlier on. What is ill benefits? Where, how do you can apply to this? And please request all examples from us. You send my email, you will have my details. And if I say now all templates, it is meaning uh, when you talk about UI 19, UI 2.7, UI 2.2, UI 2.8. I doubt if you do have it, but anyway, I do have it. I can help you with that. Employer uh, letter of COVID-19 and employee letter of COVID-19. If we're still going to need it, currently we need these things. We need, still need the permits coming from the best portal of government and we need then these letters if you want to operate with your 30% still in, in May. Um, and then in, 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 um, in June, things might change a little bit or greatly good. All right, your benefits notes. There's a step application on that. And then questions and answers is tax application. That's you know, if it requires bank statements, all that, you know, all the normal question and answers is also in there. And then debt relief financial scheme. It's not for the employee, it's for the employer. And what, how to apply, where to apply, all those documents is available. The document you can ask from me, the application. I'm not going to fill it in. You will fill it in. I will tell you where to, uh, to, to email it. In. That's how far it's going to get. I'm not going to tell you. I'm also pressing the button to see you get your money. No, unfortunately not. But the criteria is there. And the support documents it requires, everything is listed there. So read it. You get it. You get your profile of evidence together and submit it. Then there's the debt relief also, the same for business, uh, statutory documents that's required, the application process, where to email it to, and where's the application document that you require. Talk to me, I will help you. Expanded employment, uh, employment tax incentive. Now this is a thing that came up a couple of years ago. It's now been re-addressed. So I help you with that also, qualifying who and what, and where and how it is in there. Uh, that's, a, that's only to continue here. It shows you where's your reliefs and how you talk about reliefs into this EEI. Payroll uh, officers or payroll managers or payroll masters, you will know what I'm talking about and how it is a, 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 um, addressed. And then uh, employee tax, the differential of uh, employee tax, what is the differences before the 1st of April and what happens now and for how long and that kind of thing. Oh, tax. All right. You must listen to that also. Unfortunately, it's very important. Um, that's also just an example to see where and how we place it in. Remember, your money from UIF to your employee is not taxable. I do also a lot of payrolls and what I've done with my payrolls in, in Rio with the uh, relief that we receive from UIF versus the amount that my employer is going to be paid, I deduct the portion that will be paid from UIF from the salary bill. That means the salary of the employee on SAGE or VIP or whatever uh, payroll you are using. So. The tax is only applicable for the money that was given by the employer. Remember what I said, what was the process in terms of the UIF money that will uh, must be going to the employee? You need to have the proof of payment, the POP, for Department of UIF in Department of Labor, so that you can say, there's my money, now I want to be granted my next application for relief. All right. So don't go fight with Department of Labor if um, they've got such a long name nowadays. I don't know why, but anyway, okay. I'm going to stu stuck with Department of Labor. Um, but don't go and fight with them if your house is not in order. Remember, apply the rules. 
most important. Then there's some terms and conditions from ourselves. This is to say we are not tax legal compliance here. We, we can only advise and give you some guidelines. And then the additional uh, um, services we do have, um, you know, also, well, you're on deadline for COIDA. COIDA needs to be finished and finalized already by today. Otherwise, you do have a problem to not get in time before the 1st of June, your PO, your, well, your locks. That means your letter of good standing from the workman's compensation. All right, we can do for you the uh, COIDA remittance. If it's a huge um, amount of money, we will then ask them for the play, um, a payment plan, and that will be granted by uh, COIDA or Workman's Compensation, or whatever you want to call them. Um, and once that is done, you will pay a monthly fee over to them, and every month you will ask for a letter of good standing. Now, I know the guys have been very much that I help is the security industry. They are standing on a global uh, salary bill of, uh, and, and been taxed by COIDA of 4.04. .04. Now, if you do have over a million rand per month, times that with 12 is 12 million that you are paying out in a small company. And I say to you, okay, I, you want me to do your remittance to COIDA? Yes. Okay, then it's easy. The bottom line of your payroll for the year is 12 million times 4.04 percent that you have to pay to 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 coin out. Um, you can pay it now and then i'll get your locks for you your letter of good standing or i can arrange for you a payment plan all right there's nothing wrong with it and as long as you pay it every month and every month you will get your letter of good standing on that all right yeah, in a nutshell, this is what this is going to be published about. And like I said, I don't want to publish it yet because of sensitivity around about um, this non-received government gazette. That's it. And you hear what the, 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 the newspapers are talking about, and I'm worried then. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to, to talk about what what I'm worried about, I'm just saying, I don't want to eat too much of uh, uh, profit, maybe, and then I'm sitting with my all my boots in my mouth. No, so okay. The other one is our this a sweetener or this and some uh, highlights for you as the as the employer. What I'm going to discuss with the, the next two days in next week, it is the employer training part two. Now, it is, that's, that's a, a, a typo mistake, it's actually part one. Part two is the employee, where we help and guide the employee. We do it via Zoom, we do it in your uh, boardroom, you put up everything, you put up your speakers, you've got your big screens or your projector, whatever the case might be, and you can show it to your employees. All right, um, that's part of SACWA, that means it's accredited, and then the classification of this national disaster is as COVID-19 pandemic classified as national disaster 15 March 2020. And there's the regulations in the visits in there. Disaster Management Act 2002, we're going to discuss that also. And you will see the red mark here is the important. Um, there is also the two gazettes we're talking about, and I talked about it previously in my, in my first slide show. Then there's the Occupational Health and Safety Act, the President, the regulation is the Minister, and the Standards and Notice is the Chief Inspector, directed by the Minister of Labour or Employment and Labour. The Employer's Duty Section 8 of the uh, of the uh, gov government gazette shall provide information, instruction, training, supervision. Shall provide, not will. Shall provide. Employer shall ensure trained to understand the hazards of this pandemic, of this virus. Conversant with the hazards. Please take out your dictionary. 
and go visit that and you will see that the person can talk freely about a topic. Work which he has to perform, article or substance, which he or has what, 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 everything is there and that is in the training next, next, uh, next week. Disaster management is, we're tackling also there, uh, the management legislation, and again, uh, an employer shall, before an employee is exposed or may be exposed to HNBA, and after consultation with the Health and Safety Committee, established for section of the workplace, ensure that the employee is adequately and comprehensively informed and trained. Now, if you give us your employees, they will be informed, trained, and they will be certified also that they attended the process. And you can show that to the Department of Labor together with your workplace plan for this COVID-19. And you can go back and you can see all everything on my second slide, uh, uh, slide showed, I showed you, how to apply for your relief and everything and what to do. All right. And I think out of this, nobody can really say, I don't understand it because it's very simple, straightforward, and it will only help both sides, employers and employees. Okay. I'm not going to... Charles, okay, thank you. And then I see there's a question here from Renee. I uh, just quickly want to go up a little bit. And I see the, the question is as follows. Uh, just give me half a second. I can I can I can respond to Renee about the payroll of the that only was paid out and if I understand it, Renee, please correct me. Um, was paid out only in on the six, which is commonly will be because of the high volumes of payouts. Uh, it will be not on specifically deadline like the end of the month or the fifteenth or something like that. It will be a bit later. Yes, you have to go back, roll back into your April um, pay slip and you need to ad address that because of, uh, I hope I answered you there, Rene. If there's anything else, then uh, just uh, let me know. I see there, Fiona. Yes, I'm in agreement with Fiona also. The audit is correct. It was, although it was paid in May, it is for the money for April. And and that's why I said when I, before I answer this question is to say, uh, it's not going to be specifically on your payroll date or pay date. Um, it will be always a bit later. Thank you, Charles. Then I see from Ina as well. Thank you for the informative session. Do employees have to wear a mask at all times when they are in the office? Or if they are seated 1.5 meters apart, may they remove their masks? No, unfortunately not. It's compulsory to wear, to wear the mask with the social distancing. Um, yes, there's other... Other forms of protective or PPE, if you want to, it, it, might, it will be classified under PPE. Um, you do get these shields um, that you can put around your desk, where if somebody must come sit that side of the desk, um, there's perspex that you can use. Um, they, they, they make it in a nice stand. If you look into the, for example, the skim, this skin, I saw my spa here, they were hanging these shields, so there's a shield between the, the, the cashier and myself. And the same also with the chemist. They had something like a, a little bit of uh, a protective going over the, 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 the cashier, um, that's, and, but I can see that any droplets will not get to them. It will be stopped by that piece of perspex or shield, whatever you want to call it. The, the, the thickness of it, there's no specifications on that. So, yes, they can be removed, but then you must have something else, like I mentioned now, something on your desk or so. Um, I know in call centers, it is very difficult, ask me, I know that, to talk with a mask on your mouth. You just don't get your words correctly pronounced out there. So, um, <clears throat> sorry. Get him something of these things. It will help in the call center. Put him into a, a shield, something. So if they talk to the other one, there's still that um, 
protective gear or equipment between the two parties. And remember, it is the employer's responsibility to either provide a waste mine, <clears throat> disposable, the disposable mouth covering piece, the mask. Um, if I can just show you this one. This one is a disposable one and must be treated as me medical waste. Don't let people just throw it in the floor and now your cleaner must come and pick it up. You are now spreading the virus. This is, the moment it's finished using, it's only a want of use, it goes into a special bin, sealed, marked as medical waste, please. Gloves. Medical waste. These disposable gloves is medical waste. And you must not just throw it somewhere. It must be thrown by you, the user, and ensure it is marked in the dustbin for medical waste. All right. Uh, again, if you go into the material a mask, you need to supply your worker with two material masks. One to wear and one in the wash. Okay, so, and how regularly do they want to wash it? That is your workplace plan, that is your workplace rules, but I think they will know, you know, after the day I can just wash it. And it's important, use soap and hot water and let it dry in the sun, but like in Cape Town, it's very casted now. Uh, there's no sun, so don't go and throw it into the, uh, in the only into the dryer. Also, do it in the dryer, then take it out, take your iron and iron it because it will kill the germ. It will kill that virus. Okay, that's all about masks. I hope I help you with that one. Charles, the question here from Renai on masks as well. Can employees wear face shields in lieu of a face mask? Yes, yes, I do have. Um, I prefer when I go quickly shopping just to have the mask on. But if I go into the CCMA, which my first visit was this week, uh, oh, and I was a bit nervous. But anyway, I use the the mask and the shield to go in. But when I start start talking, I remove the mask, but I kept my shield on. I can just show you my example of my shield. There's the, it's very nice. You get a lot of them uh, available on the market on this day. And there's it. It comes here. That, that it, it's only to stop the, the, the droplets. That's all. So there's the shield. Yes, you can use that. That's 100% perfect. I saw it from Antoinette that mailed me. If the, yeah, okay. if the over 60 staff have a workshop job and cannot work from home, can I claim UIF for, uh, for them? Okay. So the age is over 60. Um, yes, I, I would assume so. If the over 60 staff have a workshop job. Yeah, yeah. And then, well, it will be a, te a temporary layoff and you can claim for them for a UIF relief. That will be under TAF. Okay, and then Charles, is it compulsory for employees to disclose any underlying illness? Indeed, it is. If there's a, this, I'm talking about uh, chronic diseases. But normally they will go to the doctor and ask the doctor to provide with a prognosis, that means a letter, to say that they do have a chronic disease and don't need to disclose what kind of disease. And the doctor advised that this person, this employee, cannot fit into the workplace now because of COVID-19. The person's health is at risk, but it must be certified by a doctor. So I cannot just come into my boss's office and say, oh, good morning, you know, I've got, a, I've, I've got um, a bronchitis or I've got high blood or I've got um, uh, um, diabetes. How do my boss know? He's not a doctor. He's not a medical doctor. He never diagnosed me. He never, he can't give me a prognosis on my health status. So you, or you need to tell your employee, if you are afraid of your health, please go to your medical practitioner, which is a doctor that is familiar with your illness and let them give me a prognosis. And you can type a small letter, one paragraph, 
and just ask the doctor, if you know the details of the doctor, ask the doctor, doctor, please give me a, a prognosis on my employee's illness uh, status, whether he or she will benefit coming back to work or will they be uh, vulnerable to COVID-19 or coronavirus. Thank you for that, Charles. And then we have another question here from Michelle. In the Level 4 Gazette, it stipulates a mask and not two masks. Charles, can you please clarify where does the two masks come from? The two masks came out of that uh, amendment that was published and also the, uh, the announcement from the Minister of Employment uh, and Labour as well as by the Disaster Minister, uh, Dlamini Zuma. If the employer has a potential case and pays for the private COVID-19 test that comes back positive, I would assume from an employee then, who are we required to inform as the employer? Uh, you don't need to, in, you know to, need to inform that employee needs to go into quarantine. Now, the moment the private uh, medical facility identified that your employee been diagnosed with this COVID-19, they will instruct the employee not to go back to work, but to quarantine. They will instruct the employee, do a WhatsApp or email, scan an email, this, this letter to your the medical certificate to your employer and say you are going under quarantine. Okay, and then if an employee that is over the age of 60 would like to come to work, will it be unlawful for us to allow them? Could they write us a letter and take the risk on themselves or not? The, the letter, this, this repeat that for me, <laughs> sorry. If, if an employee is over 60 and he or yeah, she yeah. would like to come to work, will it be unlawful for us to allow them? It was a guidance given by the Minister of, uh, of Health as well as the Minister of Disasters and saying that we must try and avoid people with age 60 plus not to come back to the work, but rather give them at home, work from home or temporary lay off. Um, however, if that person of 60 uh, is well, is fit and no history of any serious illnesses, he or she can provide you with a consent to say, I want to come back to work. I don't fear this. I'm happy to be in the employment or in the workplace. I don't want to work from home. But that must be a, an agreement between the two of you. Thank and it's you. also very important for you as the employer to make your own assessment whether you want to bring in this person. Now, what? how can you make an assessment? You first go to the personnel file. Hey, Charles, you know, we always run to the personnel file. Then we go and look. What's the history? History on warnings. Uh -uh. No, we're not going to look in the history of warning. We're going to look into the medical certificate that was issued. This person worked for us for five years. I can establish through that if there's really a chronic, chronic illness because I'm just going to check how many times I receive a sick note from the employee. Irrespective of whether it was said medical condition, you can say, but no, no, sir, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm scared. Your, your file pre prevail for me that, that you are at risk or man. Well, and, and we must understand, don't be harsh on a person that wants to come, uh, come back to work that's now over 60. It's, it's also self-esteem that you are breaking down if you just say, no, you stay there. Please consult with the employee and give the reasons why you'd make such a decision. A decision in terms of coming back or staying at home. And, and tell them it's nothing to do with your age. It's about your health. That's the underlining issue, your health. Thank you, Charles. Then I see you from Wayne. On a construction site where there is more than 80 people on site and they all stay on the site, do we just follow the normal COVID PPE or will there be additional things that we need to adhere to? Wayne? Feel free. Hi, hi, uh, Peter. Hi, yes, Charles. Um, yeah, just a normal, 
the normal face masks and your normal PPE um, because the guys stay on site in either containers or existing offices while we're constructing the, the new premises, uh, but it's all on the same site. Yeah, well, the, 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 the wearing of the mask is, is compulsory. Um, so, and they, they staying in, in, I know what you're talking about, you, you must be in construction, construction business or so. Um, mm -hmm. Where your your requirements is to have a container that where they can sleep and and make food and another container for the yeah but it is important that the sanitization and the mask and the testing must be in place so when they're working with maybe third parties coming in but when they are at at their leisure uh, busy making food it's only the crowd they. Yes, they can remove the mask. Um, I would presume that it's not, it's like you going into your house and you say, hello, my wife, hello, my kids. And um, you remove your ma mask already because we are okay with one another. Uh, and that's why I'm saying the testing will be compulsory to test your, your employees on that site every morning, every afternoon and every evening. Yeah, you're talking about uh, the thermometer test, the temperature that's every right. morning and recording that into the... Correct. Right. So you've Thanks. got you've got a register where you record it, you, that you measure them, and um, you can do it randomly. You can do all of them. I would suggest all of them every time. It will be the best. Okay. Thanks. Hundred percent. Right. Okay, uh, Wayne. Not, I see from Hendriku. Hendriku, if you are still in this meeting, um, if you can maybe just elaborate on your question as well. You have a mask on permanently. Do you not rebreathe your own air, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Enrico, if you'd like to unmute yourself, you can maybe ask Charles the question directly. Hi, Charles. Uh, Charles, on, on that question, and this is coming broadly from most of the employees here, is when you do sit at your desk and you're not communicating with anyone and the furthest employee is about four meters away from you, why do you still need to keep your mask on when you can take it off? Because you're oh, you can. social distancing, mm. you're not near someone, and by keeping the mask on, you're arming your, your, your body by killing it slowly with rebreathing your own uh, ear over yeah. and over and over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, was, that was quite a topic raised, but uh, the minister, uh, Lamini Zuma, slammed it down to say, you know, there's only precautionary measures that we put a mask on, though we are living in our own oxygen every now and then. Uh, because of the breathe, and, and they, they advise this three-level kind of uh, mask, which I can feel to myself also. Um, that's why I'm using the shield sometimes. Now, that's where with, it's in connection, Enrico, with my previous answer also, to say that you can remove the mask, but you must have something other than that. Now, remember, social distancing of 1.5 to 2 meters, it is where the mask is still on. Uh, in your circumstances where you say four or five meters away from each other, it's fine. As long as there's somebody not coughing and that, where it comes with the cough. And we had a sister the other day on here to show us how far these droplets with a cough can actually fly. Uh, it's amazing. So they, they can, and remember this virus is airborne. So it, it travels in the air. In, if there's an air con, and it blows onto me and I cough, it takes it further as far as this flow is going. Yes. So that is where the whole thing about mask. But what I said, you can build the shield, these perspex shields, whatever the case might be, or use a shield on your head and relieve you from your mask. Okay. No, it's 100%. Uh, no, we turned off the aircon, so we know about that. I'm just making the case for the masks being put on on eight hours a day, which is not going to be very healthy for anyone. No, and, 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 uh, no indeed, I do agree with you. Yes. Thank you very much for the elaboration. My pleasure. For that, Enrico. Uh, then we have a question here from uh, Roshin. When your temperature is 38 and you are sent home to get tested, if the test is negative, Charles, do you get paid for the time that you are at home? or not okay yes you are getting paid 
And the reason why I'm saying you are getting paid is because it falls under um, sick leave. And we call it for, for the first instance where you are identified with a high fever and they tell you go in for temporary uh, uh, um, uh, quarantine, phone the toll free number, get somebody to come and test you, that kind of thing. So don't rush the employee first to a doctor or somebody. Tell them to phone the toll free number so somebody can come and test them. Yes, for that interim period, you need to classify that as sick leave. That's normally three to four days. Then Department of Health will be there to make the test. Three, four days thereafter, you will get your results and you give it to the employer and that will justify the previous as well as the ongoing quarantine period. Now, a quarantine can be anything between 14 to 21 days after they received your test. Thank you for that, Charles. I see there's a question from Renee as well. Uh, Renee, if you are still in this meeting, uh, I can read you from documents I've read. You can claim from WCA if an employee is tested positive for COVID-19. There's a lot of rules, etc., etc. Um, Renee, if you are still in this meeting, can you maybe just unmute yourself and then ask your question to Charles directly? Uh, Renee, are you still in this meeting? Uh, sorry, I just I was trying to get that to work. <laughs> um, the, I read the WCA where it says that if a, a person, one of your employees gets sick with COVID-19, as long as you can prove that you've had all the safety measures in place and that you can claim from WCA because it is a, um, a health-related illness. But with the covid uh, the, the level three coming in now the churches are opening and we do have some people who are high up in the church and will be doing this on their own time so if they come into our workplace afterwards with bringing the COVID into our workplace and then jeopardizing all of us where do we stand on this will what WCA still um, pay them out or and um, if we have to close down and quarantine what recourse do we have Okay, no, you know, when an employee is in your employment and get contracted with the virus, it will fall under workman's compensation. But provided that you do have these rules and regulations that I was talking earlier on in, in the session, that that's in place and 100% executed to the T, um, then you can prove that to workman's compensation and say, well, how it happens in the workplace, we don't know, but yes, there is it but we identify somebody from outside came in and brought in the virus because that person has also now went into quarantine. Now that is where I answered for Wayne about the testing. It's very important seeing that you are at risk, that you also do some testing for people to come in. And if I can just stand down on the 38 degrees level temperature, whatever the case might be, some I, I tested, and, and my, my cousin, she is Marita Kriya on, on SABC and the African side. Um, she was tested at the, the, the building the other day, and she phoned me up and she talked about it. And she was asking, um, the 20, well, the, the morning when I entered, I was 27. When I went out, I was 36.8. She said, and I had to go back and fetch something else, and I was then... At 31, now how does it work? Yeah, well, your temperature turns on, up and down, and it, it, well, if, if you get cross, you also get the temperature, all right? So 38 to measure and to say, stop, you're 38, you're not coming in here, you're sick, you're well. I would say the same, some of the principles that we can apply as the mines with under influence of alcohol. They do have the calibrator, they will uh, test you and say, mm -mm, I can see you are smelling of alcohol. Go sit for an hour and come, we will retest you again. The same I will apply with a test. Say to the employee, listen, listen, you cannot come in, wait a little bit or get somewhere, space outside where he can sit, relax, have a smoke or a cool drink, and then return back and be measured again. It's again 38, obviously there's a problem immediately sent home, let him call the 0800 number, and that's it. Yes, I agree with you. Um, 
I don't want to elaborate so much about the churches on this stage because the rules is not in, in, on play, in place on this stage. We don't know how they're going to govern this. It's been said, uh, you as leaders, and I was listening on, on um, uh, the news last night, the pastors in the, in the dormitories, they were talking um, also from the Muslim um, uh, uh, committee, they were talking about of their congregation. So their rules must still be in place. Once we know the rules, we know what is the danger also. So keep your eyes open for maybe any announcements coming over the, the news uh, media um, about these rules so that you, that you know. But make also your employees aware that you are going to do this a compulsory testing every morning, every afternoon, you know, with the lunch breaks and then this afternoon before they're going home. That's the best we can do on this stage. Thanks a lot Thank for you. that, Charles. I was just wondering, yeah. Is that, is that okay with you, Renee? You understand what I've said? Um, it, you know, I understand the testing and everything, but if, if one of the employees become positive with COVID-19 because of their own actions after work hours and they've brought it into our company, where does the company stand? Because now we're going to be have to do the deep cleaning, we're going to have to quarantine everybody. Is, is there any way or, or is there anything we can do to say to them, if you're going to do that kind of thing, we're going to have to um, maybe find another way to reduce your contact with the rest of the workers? Yeah, no, you can do that. If you, if you, if you feel that one of your employees or two or so is... Uh, is, is put your, your business at, at risk, then obviously you can do that. I mean, um, on this stage, my domestic is not coming to work for me uh, it's since March. Um, I will not allow it in the, in the house, not even at level three, uh, not level two even. So because I know that she do have a risk, she do have some illnesses also, which is a, which is a problem to me, um, but it's not a problem when before COVID, but now. And I want to save her from me and from myself not to be uh, contracted with this, this virus by traveling to come and work for me. So yeah, would, we, would we have to now um, basically call those people because, you know, we don't want them to feel that they're being picked on. But would we have to call and, and, and communicate with them and find a, a way around this that makes us feel safe and will uh, also allow them to continue doing their church work because... We can't tell them it's not, they can't do it, you know. Um, how do we go about this? Do we have to do communications with them or what? Yes, it is good to sit down um, and you don't have to disclose to anybody that you're going to have a meeting with them specifically on a specific topic. You sit down, you say, my staff, I do have a problem with that. How do we foresee not to be contaminated with this virus if you might be in, in contact with somebody, then there you can start with rules like, first of all, are you, are you aware of somebody that do have the, the COVID? Um, were you in contact with that person? All those kind of things. And, and, and I think, Renee, it's always the better to, to put a problem there and say, let's brainstorm and see how we can resolve this. How can we put everybody to ease and also protect everybody else? Between the two of us, between the group of us, we can do this. So yes, it must be a two-way conversation here. And then agreed in minutes or in a rule or in what in writing, that is what we will apply. Okay, thank you. And, and if, if someone doesn't wear or comply with the PPE rules, what is our stand on that as well? What can we do to make sure that it's enforced? Well, that is severe. I mean, you're putting people at risk at that stage. There is rules in, I started, if there's that rule in the workplace to wear masks always or protective gear always, and this person just don't do that, you say, sorry, I'm going to put you in a discipline, um, discipline hearing because why you are not listening to the company's rules and regulations in terms of COVID-19. And that person can be dismissed, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Pleasure, Renee. I uh, just want to find out, thanks a lot, Renee and Charles. Uh, Yvonne, Yvonne Koza, are you still in this meeting, Yvonne? 
Ivana, I see there you are. If you can, maybe just your question. We still haven't received the payout, etc. cetera. Uh, do you maybe perhaps want to discuss this with Charles so that everyone can get it directly? Yes, I wanted to find out how are we going to do because now we're still waiting and there's nothing. Can you elaborate what you're going to do on? Because we are still waiting for the answer. We tried to do the U filing okay. online, but they, they did respond to us, but we haven't received any payment, any, nothing. So when we try to call them, we don't get them. So we wanted to find out how can you access us. Yeah, Yvonne, much easier. Send me your email address. You've got my email address. Send me your email address. I will give you the contact that you can email them straight to, which I feel is very competent. And then okay. you can you can ask them what is wrong. You made the application, everything. You can also attach maybe the response from the department of, or, or the UI, um, UIF. What was their response? And you say, but we're still waiting. Remember what I said earlier? There was a complaint about fi a fiber not to pay out uh, funds um, that was because of the fiber but i think they're up and running again um so yes but send me your email address i'll send you the information no problem okay i will do something okay okay everyone thank okay, you thank you Bye, thank you charles i think uh, i see as well from uh, lumpies are builders in a homeowners association complex responsible to adhere to COVID policy given to them by the contractor or is the appointed officer for the HOA responsible to make sure all adhere to the policy? Well, with this policy, uh, you are uh, you are actually a uh, need to appoint a uh, COVID-19 compliance officer separate from the OHS uh, compliance officer. Uh, because the one's eyes is on health and safety, which he normally will do, and the other one's eyes is only on the compliance of COVID-19, the rules and regulations on that. And that's why there's a warrant letter that that person must sign. But if you feel that your your health and safety officer of OHS is so compliant or, or capable of handling both of that, then he signs both uh, uh, warrant letters or, or positions that in looking after the normal OHS as well as COVID-19 if we accepted that otherwise but there's there's no extra remuneration needed or anything like that you appoint somebody that you know that will enforce the policy in terms of the back to work or the new policy or the well the, the workplace policy yes. sorry Peter I just to, um, um, maybe you um, didn't understand it quite correctly I just want to know if, if you are in a homeowners association and there are about seven builders on different sites those builders I'm quite sure must be responsible for their own um, COVID policy now we have also a builder a builders person that's responsible responsible to see that all the rules are adhered to so the, the the question is: Is the builder responsible for his own people, or is the appointed officer for after LHOA is he responsible to make to to see that the builders uh, um, contractors are um, adhering to the rules, or are the contractor itself responsible for that? I'm going to answer you, and you must correct me um, if I'm on the wrong road. First of all, the builder, uh, normally they do have a team, six or ten or more. He is responsible, obviously, for his own rules and also applicable. And he must appoint his own uh, uh, COVID-19 compliance officer. All right. That's the first instance. Secondly, your guy that's working for you, are they already to make sure that the builders are compliant with the OHS rules and regulations? Isn't that so? Yes, yeah, he, right. that, that's why we appointed team to make sure that they do apply. And mm. um, if not, then obviously you can report them. Correct. Now that same person is your compliance officer. Yes. And he can go and say, okay, I want to check whether you are compliant. Mm. Okay. Okay. You understand? Provided yeah. that if they if they question him and say, okay, what is your uh, background of COVID nineteen? Were you yes. trained? Yeah. Then yes, I've got a certificate. I am yes. trained. 
So I want to check your compliance. Wonderful. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, pleasure. Thanks a lot for that, Charles. Um, Charles, I get in just another question or two here. Uh, let's maybe start with this one. Uh, number one, do we check the temperature of the employee at entry and then again at the exit of the office or only at entry and then almost the same question, at what temperature would you send an employee home? So the question is entry and exit and what temperature? You know, I would say that you test the temperature three times a day or three times. Entrance, lunch break and exit. It's only safe. It's only safe. The, obviously, we wo we're working with a ballmark figure of 38. At that stage, you ask the questions to the employer. Are you okay? Do you have maybe a headache or anything like this? Because you are 38. Just tell me quick. Yes, um, I've got a slight headache or I've got a sore throat or nothing. I'm just f feeling a bit feverish. Go to the telephone. Call 8. Uh, what is it? Eight double zero. And you've got a number. I gave it to you. Go call that toll-free number, talk to them, and let's establish whether you must be going into guarantee. Easy as that. So now, I've seen a plan that has been now formulated for the schools. Um, they've got a severe, it's one of the local schools here. There's the entrance, sanitize, sanitize your hands, everything. Then you go in. There's the first, that's the first point. The second point will be you get scanned. The third point is that you are getting questioned. Were you traveling? Were you that? Were you in contact with a person? Do you know of a person with COVID-19? All these kind of things. Um, and once that is, the, that is declared, he will sign the document, sanitize, go to the next point. And if he's been identified with a higher, uh, um, higher um, temperature, like 38 plus, then they will take him through another uh, um, a, a process into a room which will then allow him to make a call to his parents and tell the parents to come and fetch them and also um, that the, the parents will then decide whether he's going to phone the toll-free number or they do have a private um, uh, uh, medical um, facility that can assist. So yes, um, I would suggest that you use the morning, the mid-afternoon and when they're going home. Um, the better the how can I say the better the, the, the more secure your place are in in in, um, in your workplace. Um, can I just ask Johan Johan Voigt? Can you uh, just elaborate on your question? Yes, Charles. Uh, um, it is not recommended to have meetings with your employees, and I just want to know how you how do you now um, inform your uh, the health and safety committee, getting them into a room, I mean, is that uh, advisable? Well, I, I think you can do social distancing with your, your committee because the committee is not that huge. I don't know how big is your committee, uh, please. But the ones I'm with experience, I don't have so much committee members, but I will easy in a good space uh, allow them in. Um, I don't know how many is on your committee. Oh, we've got 14 on the committee here. 14. Now, it goes about where you want to meet. That is the important. Yeah. No, um, that's and then fine. to regulate the distance between them and to say, guys, you know, we're a bit close to one another. we basically 1.5 away or one meter away from it. Please wear at all times your, your, your uh, mask or your shield. At least you do have uh, protection there. Oh, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate it. Okay, Johan. Well, Johan, it, it is important, but uh, important that the committee, that the health and safety committee, sits on this health and safety uh, on, on this manual that we discussed earlier on. Um, that they also do have their inputs um, and also take a note what they need to go out and give to the other workers the information that they got from you or from the committee. Thank you. Pleasure, Johan. Thanks a lot for that, Johan uh, and Charles. Then we also have a question here from Katlego. Uh, Hi, Charles. Can a company appoint more than one compliance officer? Yes. There's, there's nothing in the law. They, they give you a minimum of one. One compliance officer for COVID-19. But if you feel, no, 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 one is not going to be sufficient. Uh, I've got too many workplaces that I need to control. Yes, by all means, do so. Please, I've, um, 
I will encourage that. Thank you for that, Charles. Ladies and gents, colleagues, any more questions from anyone? You can just unmute yourself to the top right. Feel free to ask your question. Um, hi, Charles. Uh, just back on the construction. On a large site, um, most of these guys have been off now for two months. They're not going to re-enter the site. We're going to sit with about 60 to 80 people re-entering the site uh, or a site at a time. And, and subcontractors, will, they, will it be compulsory to, to, to ask them all to go and be tested for the COVID before they are re-allowed on, on the site if they can prove that they are negative or will that not be compulsory? Well, it's now, nowhere in law that you need to do that before they're coming on to. I don't know if they're going to maybe address that in level three. It might be one of the prerequisites before you entering the, the workplace now coming from a long time time into construction because we know construction and i had an interesting question the other day also with a weapon a, this um, uh, participant was also in a construction they've got a building of 10 floors and they say well if i identify one or one was identified with COVID 19 do i have to shut down no you don't have to shut down i think if you know where the person went to you you execute your normal procedures of testing, getting your safety things in place, that's the only thing. I'm, I'm a little bit cautious when it comes to this togetherness, where they need to, to assemble and, can I say, do their cooking and sleeping at the assembled place. Now they're coming into it and they've been not the whole time there. And sanitization is very important that you first sanitize all those places that they're going to use before they're entering that. Yes, no, no, we've, yeah, we've arranged for, for a company to go out and deep clean and sanitize the whole site before, before they re-enter. All right, no, 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 that's, that's good, that, that will help. But like I said, you get your meter in place and you, you check those things, and obviously you will know if there's, there's a problem, well, an underlining problem coming into becomes now a big problem. Um, and, and that will identify you. So, but I think if you, your precautionary measures is in place to the T. Your your employees understands and uh, uh, and, and and they are fully compliant. Um, I'm happy to say go forward. All right. Thanks very much. Okay, Wayne. Hi, Charles. Um, this is Lampis by Sunet again. Um, I just want to um, give you a picture of what it looks like there. It is a community um, on the west coast. Um, but it, there is a public road driving through from one point to another point. And from at the end of that, um, the Lumpy Spa area, there's um, if all other residential areas that people can go to. So if someone start um, driving from the main entrance through to, say for instance, to Protania Bay, um, do we need to test that person? Or, or that, that's the first one. And then if there's someone coming to visit in Lumpy's Bay, do we still need to test that person before that, um, he or she can go into um, the area to visit a resident? Well, there's nothing in law that say you must do something like that. Um, I think it's it's all all to do with your uh, your processes in 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 that vicinity. Um, if there's maybe a guardhouse with a, a access control or something like that, I will say yes, they can they can do the testing. If there's nothing like that, obviously they're coming to visit somebody within that that area uh, that they know of, uh, brother, sister, uh, friend, or whatever the case might be, and we cannot control that. Um, but if you feel that for safety of your residents that you want to do that, well, you've got one main road can you can block and say you have to be tested there. Okay, thank you so much. I just have one one last question. Um, if someone is not complying with the COVID, for instance, they were not wearing their mask in the office, can we give them warnings or can we give them final warnings or what are, what are our recourses? Yes, as long as, like I said, if, if, as long as the rule is in place, you can do so. And if they're still not um, answering or if they're still not adhering to your rules and regulations, obviously, it's like the final warning is not enough. Fine, then I put you in a discipline inquiry. And you must also look into the severity and, and, and gravity of, of the transgression into, in terms of this. Um, if somebody is just trying to annoy you, 
I mean, that's insolence. And that, that borders to insubordination. So a dismissal for that is 99%. Okay, great. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks a lot, Charles. Uh, just before we proceed, I see there's another question um, from Pauline. After quarantine, does the staff member have to provide a negative test before returning? No, you will get a release from the medical institution whether he was medicalized uh, or medical treated that he or she may return to the workplace. Okay, and then uh, from Simonet, should sanitization of a site or an office area take place once a week or more? Surely once off is not good enough seeing that employees are returning to work on a daily basis, especially on construction sites. Yeah, I think you must look into what is your inherent requirements um, in terms of how regularly you need to sanitize because you will know what is a trafficking coming in and out. Subcontractors versus contractors versus employees versus subcontractor employees. So if there's a high movement of employees, um, then obviously your risk is just growing, growing, growing. So once again, you only yourself can establish whether that is, um, uh, must it be once a week, must it be twice a week, must it be once a month, whatever the case might be. I would say if your sanitization point a lot in there and you see that your compliance officer is enforcing rules of sanitizing hands, you're wearing the mask and whatever PPE is required, then you know that your risk is going lower. But if there is people mentioning from the previous delegate uh, or participant, just taking off the mask and being rough and ruthless, then you're in the higher spot of, you know, of, of danger. So you must decide there as your workplace. Um, is it good, man manageable or not? And then you need to upgrade your, your sanitization, unfortunately. Thanks a lot for that, Charles. Any other questions from any attendees? Yes, hi, Charles. Hello. How are you? Good in yourself. I'm good. So, Charles, I just wanted to ask, in a case that uh, you have employees that do not work remote, no? and then uh, they produce a certificate to you that uh, they, uh, they produce a medical certificate from a doctor saying that they are not work during uh, this pandemic. So how do you treat it? Is it going to be a sick leave or... How are you going to treat it? Well, first of, uh, first of all, if that person do have an underlying illness of anything that's chronic, and the doctor gave you a prognosis to say this, this person is you know, vulnerable to COVID-19 and we advise that he or she do not return to the workplace but remain, remain at home up until a safe time, which I don't know, which we really don't know. Yes, you can then apply to TAF for relief to say that you're going to lay this person temporarily off and then pay them what TAF is paying out for them for relief. All right. Um, and the other instance where the person is in quarantine, you will use the ill benefits through UIF to apply for the money that that person must be paid in sick leave will be paid by the UIF through ill benefits. Remember, such a person must be in isolation more than 14 days. Any time that it's more than 14 days, you can apply for ill benefits to oh, your okay. 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 All right. okay. Charles, I see we have a question here from Antoinette. We are not going to return all our staff at this moment. There's just not enough work for them and don't want them sitting around doing nothing. So the question is, do we have to pay them or temporary dismissal? or keep them on UIF? Okay, Antoinette, yes, that's what's happening with any big scale business or any business that needs to up their operation is they will come and systematically started gearing up the, the operation. So you can't bring into your workplace all 50 at once. And to say now everything is going to be Buttons on tops, and there we go. Okay, your mask is on, and the whole thing is running. No, not at all. I fully agree, and I understand your situation. Now, for that, I would remain them placed on the TASH, that TASH pay, uh, pays them, and that will be a temporary layoff. So they sit at home, they get their money from TASH, 
and that's fine. The moment we are fully operational, you will be returned back and we will inform Touch. Thank you very much. We don't need that payment anymore and they will be welcome in the workflow. I hope that answers your question, Antoinette. Thank you very much, Charles and Antoinette. Colleagues, just before we uh, knock off and sign off, any other questions from your side? You're more than welcome to ask your question. We still have time available. Um, yes, Peter, I was just thinking about this. Um, where in the uh, COVID policy can I get a proof that we must employ an officer to, um, to, to make sure that everybody's adhering to the rules? Are there anywhere a statement that's saying there must be one? Yes. Uh, if you look into the amendments, and I cannot lay my hand on it now, um, you can email me and I'll send you a copy. Um, okay, any great. amendment that was recently issued in level four um, about this um, employment or re uh, back to work uh, manual uh, policy, um, the, the requirement is to appoint uh, COVID-19, they call it not an officer, we call it the officer because we're working with OHS and we're talking about health and safety officers yeah. and she officers and that kind of thing. So, but in, in the Gazette, in the amended Gazette, they say, and um, they, there was the template, which they, it's a guide for this um, manual that we, that we developed, that you need to appoint a COVID-19 compliance manager and in that was mentioned the compliance manager and I said guys my why a manager I would rather see my managers operational and get somebody else that's strong that can do for me the the compliance and also sitting a health and safety committee but do the compliance in terms of COVID-19 okay thank you right. and I can email you the amendment and you and I will highlight for you where that that speaks thank it. you so much thank you pleasure uh, thanks a lot. Uh, okay, then I see you from Susan, Charles and Peter. Thank you so much for this training. I found it so valuable and I'm really pleased to have you as our partner through this crisis. Your guidance is so important. So, um, Charles, again, thanks to you. We really do appreciate. Charles and to the remaining delegates, thank you very much for your time. It seems as if all the questions have been answered. Again, if you have any further queries and or questions, uh, Charles, what I will do, I will have a discussion with you as well, and then we will just see that we email the relevant companies and the attendees of the past three, four weeks and the ones for, for next week. Again, we're going to invite all the delegates next week, Monday and Thursday as well. You're more than welcome. There's no additional cost. You can attend again, should there be updates, as per my email on level three. It's no additional cost. We will send the information. Feel free to attend again. And uh, Charles and I will have a discussion on the training towards the employees in your company. And we will pop you an email on that. And um, from our side, from EECMS, our virtual offices here in Pretoria, Charles, uh, you being there in Cape Town, uh, thanks a lot, everyone, for attending today. Charles, thanks again for your valuable time. We really do appreciate. And we'll keep everyone posted. I will stop the recording in the next minute or two and we will place it on YouTube and I will mail the link to all the attendees of today as well. And as mentioned, I will then keep you posted on the future endeavors for next week, Monday and Thursday. Charles, again, for thank your you. time, thank you very much for everyone attending. Thank you very much, Charles. Thank you very much and thank, thank you very much, uh, Everyone that asked questions, it was any question is always relevant to me and uh, relevant to COVID. And the better we can make ourselves knowledgeable with this COVID-19 or the coronavirus, um, yes, um, the better we exercise the health and safety and the safety of our employees, it will only safeguard us in the future. And I always say, you know, be strong, be safe and be positive. I think we can go through this. And um, let's take it by the heart and not by the hand. Have a good day. Everyone, thank you very much, Charles. Thanks a million. Be safe. Enjoy. EECMS is introducing the first virtual employment equity compliance solution by taking your consultant online.
Clients are no longer required to conduct face-to-face -face meetings with our consultants. Our virtual solution will allow clients from around the globe to interact, consult and train with their respective consultants from the comfort of their own desk. With our web-based compliance services, your employment equity solution submissions and consultations will stay compliant as per the requirements of the Act, no matter where you are based. No more travelling or boardroom bookings, we bring the service to your desktop. Conduct conference calls with remotely based colleagues and superiors during the consult. Share live documents or screens to all attendees and consultants for brainstorming or clarification sessions. Audio visually record meeting discussions between yourselves and the consultant for references and notes. Join the web-based consultancy services today and comply with your employment equity services from the comfort of your own desk. Speak to your consultant for more information or contact our information center for details on the services rendered. EECMS, your virtual employment equity compliance management service. EECMS utilizes an online tool to ensure full and total EE compliance as per the amended act. We ensure that you are in full compliance with the Employment Equity Act. We do it all. You just need to connect with us as we aim to become your go-to guy. We meet and consult via our virtual solutions. We implement the Act and you achieve compliance. Employers with over 50 employees, agriculture over 6 million turnover, mining over 22 and a half million turnover, manufacturing over 30 million turnover, electricity, gas and water over 30 million turnover, construction over 15 million turnover, retail and motor over 45 million turnover and more. Eliminate penalties, increase a triple BEE score, forming a sense of belonging to employees, effective transformation, and promoting diversity. We submit the EEA2 and EEA4 reports on behalf of our clients, after approval thereof by the CEO or accounting officer. EECMS has a level 4 broad-based Black Economic Empowerment rating. Our clients therefore qualify for 100% recognition when procuring from us. Our CEO has been involved in various marketing and communication entities. We have various EE specialists, including a compliance auditor with three years experience at one of the big four auditing firms. Our team has been involved in 62 DG reviews from 2017 to September 2019 with a 100% pass rate of companies not being referred to the Labour Court. Submissions of reports are done by a number of experienced data capturers and we have a staff complement to ensure the successful submissions of all our clients. We currently serve more than 160 companies who employ anything between 6 to 12,500 employees. Our client base includes private companies, listed companies, close corporations, non-profit organizations, educational institutions and government. Clients' annual turnover ranges from very little to more than 1 billion rand and we have a client base throughout South Africa. EECMS, your virtual employment equity compliance management service.